Hi and welcome to More Than a Rose Festival 2000, 2017 here in Clontarf in St. Dan's Park. My name is Antonia Moore. And I'm Ed Keeley. And over the next two hours we're going to bring you all the action from the park, so stay tuned. So the festival is really starting to kick off now. The festival's on all day today and tomorrow. And if you want to come down, there's so much for everybody to see. We've got all the stalls, which have anything from plants to bird houses. We've got all the food. So it really is an amazing um, ev uh, event down here. Um, and it's well worth a visit to St. Anne's Park, nestled here between, you know, the, the, between the sea. During the show, we'll be giving you a taste of what's involved in the park and talking to lots of different people that have very interesting subjects and what they're doing and what they're displaying in the park here in St. Anne's. So for the next two hours, stay tuned. Firstly, I'm joined by um, Noel and Mick from Dublin City Council. Th th introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Noel McAvoy. I'm the Executive Park Superintendent and St. Anne's is under my wing. And, and I'm Mick Harford. I'm the Senior District Parks Officer and St. Anne's Park is one of the parks under my wing as well. So tell us a little bit about the festival. Is it your busiest time of the year organising this? Organising this does take up a lot of time and it is, I suppose, our busy, busy time. And it's right in the middle of the spring and summer, you know, and we're very busy anyway, you know, but we're always delighted to be doing it because uh, when you get the community out, sure, it's all good news, you know. And what's it mean to you, Mick? It means to me uh, I leave my house on Wednesday and I might get back home on Sunday. That's no, honestly, I've worked on this festival for 23 years. Uh, seen it grow from a little small garden fete, and as Noel and myself call it now, it's a garden fete on steroids. So it's big and better, but the operational, what we try and do is make sure everybody just sees the swan above water. So we're the ones paddling like hell underneath to make sure that the experience that the public have here is what it is. So when do you start planning the event? Is, oh. it, is it straight after it finishes for next yeah, year? That's exactly what it is. Once it finishes, we, we, we would start putting together what we went wrong and what we would like to improve and first thing we would chase is music musicians bands and then we start building on vendors we start building on other events that we want to bring in and then we go visiting other places to see what's going on and yeah it's a long long track you know and it's come a long way did it start off as a festival because you have the beautiful rose gardens here in celebration of those well it did it that was the original uh, idea of the whole thing because you have the six acres of the rose garden international rose garden uh, we wanted to celebrate that and it started off originally as uh, a small sort of garden fete and it has grown year on year on to this and we have uh, improved it uh, incrementally and it has a great sense of uh, heft about it that it's not going to fall apart on us you know yeah and the, yes there's your beautiful six acres in there of rose gardens and some you know, amazing variety in there as well yes like we have just just over 20,000 rose bushes so anybody that might have a rose bush in their garden just think about that and multiply it by 20,000 so the maintenance of it great crew of people working on it and of course none of this happens without the whole team like it's, it's not just Noel and myself there's a whole team behind us from the staff that work here on the ground in the Rose Garden to the admin staff and civic offices who pull together all the bits then and then my job is to then for the festival create it on the ground that's my job and then how rewarding of it is it for you lads then to see it all together to see all the families out enjoying themselves all the kids we've like llamas over there and I know it's fantastic <laughs> and that's the payback and uh, all our families come along and everybody's saying oh this is different this year it wasn't the same as last year that's better than this so it's great you know it is really good and it's great to have a good news story because working in the council you do tend to hear uh, a lot of the bad news and all the problems but when it comes to this you'll find that people will actually come over to you and say this is great fun 
you should do this more often. And I say, only once, please, you know, if there's a lot on here, you know. And have you found over the years then, have you seen the same people coming back? Is it something that's going on to maybe people's calendars making their... Oh, yes, definitely. Like, we're, we've always been the third weekend in July. Always the third weekend. And uh, I remember one year, one lady came up to me. She said, uh, do you don't mind me asking you, when is it on next year? I said, why? She says, my daughter's getting married, and you guys always get the great weather. So they wanted to book their wedding on the date that it was to ensure good weather. We have been blessed. In the 23 years I've been on it, we had one week end of it that it shower showery times but that worked for people with stalls inside because people ran into the marquees they bought product in there and they went out and they went in and saw some of some of the other people that we had there so look it's it's we enjoyed i'm not planning on retiring soon but i'm looking forward to when i do when i can actually come down and see the festival as a pundit uh, you know ra rather than because like most gardeners a gardener will see the weed in their garden whereas a visitor will see the flower so I'm walking around all the time seeing this, 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 the, the, the negative bits. And that's, that helps us for the following year when we tweak it. We never get it 100% right, but we get it better each year, we, we hope. And do you have a, like a favourite memory of it? Is there something that you find particularly okay. rewarding about it? Uh, the a favourite memory would be uh, the Vikings walking through the festival with uh, Coca-Cola ice cream cones. That's my big memory of it, you know. You really could see anything, as I said. Yeah, we Vikings over there, we've lambs. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, I was thinking, I think, um, well, we've about a minute left. So, yeah. yeah, the Vikings is something else. You had a big, for the commemorations oh, as yeah, well. Oh, yeah, we did. Uh, we did on the... Uh, what was it? Ten, what's 10, the 14. ten fourteen? Mm -hmm. Make a big pardon. Uh, yeah, we had we had thousands of people here, and we had uh, Vikings knocking ten bells out of one another, you know, and uh, it was great fun, and it, it it helped put us more and more on the map. But the Rose Festival here is quite unique. It has no alcohol. It's a very family event. Uh, the local guard, the station, gets involved, brings in a mobile station. They're all going around enjoying themselves too, and we have the Coast Guard and. Uh, all sort of colours and hues of the local community come here. And it's simple, but it really works. Yeah, absolutely, lads. Well, listen, that's what we uh, have time for the lads. We'll be seeing a little bit more of Mick uh, later on. Um, but next, we're going to go over to Clontarf GAA Club. They have amazing facilities here in the park, maybe one of the best training places in the country, brilliant pitches, and they're a huge part of this local community as well. So we're going to go over to a bit of VT with Clontarf GAA. 